Yeah, thanks, Nick. And, you know, thanks, everybody for joining. So, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, this, this challenging, you know, kind of fracture of a pylon. So first, Nick, are you a person who calls it a pylon or a pylon? Um, I call it a pylon. Uh, that's, uh, I don't know, am I right or wrong? I don't even know. Yeah, I, I think you're right, because that's what I call it, too. <laughs> I, I don't know, but that's, it's always debated. People call it, you know, the, a pylon or pylon. It's the same thing. It's kind of like when something's broken or fractured, yeah. it's, it means the same thing. What, uh, hey, before you get too far, Jan, just for those who are out there, we want to make this interactive. So if you have questions that come up, um, use the chat function to um, to send out uh, questions and we'll try to address them. If we don't hit them right when they come in, we'll, um, we'll we, it means we're getting to them as we kind of work through the talk. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So please use the chat function. And, you know, we're going to kind of go over some step-by-step -step what a you know, pylon is how they occur uh, and how we treat them, you know, and hopefully we'll keep it interesting with some case-based discussion and just kind of some of the basics. And, you know, in the end, we want to make everybody a little bit better equipped to handle these injuries, you know, from a, from a rep standpoint, from a surgeon standpoint. So, you know, we'll get started here. And here's just some representative x-rays. So basically a, a pylon or pylon, much more than any ankle fracture, right? That's And that's one of the key things, you know, and someone goes, oh, it's just an ankle on the schedule. If it's a pylon, you better be ready for a little bit more than just maybe a, you know, a fibular plate or, and um, some screws in the medial mal. So, so yeah, so goals, you know, we're going to talk a little bit, patient characteristics, radiograph interpretation. We already went over that uh, classification just to kind of know if we're, when we're talking about like, Hey, is this a really bad pylon? Like no pylon is a good one. All right. We'll, we'll start there. Um, and then acute versus delayed fixation, some of the definitive stabilization, what are we using? Plates, screws, rods, and so forth. So outcomes, this is just important to know when we're talking about this, this is why we get more, I think, stressed out in the operating room and why we need more preoperative planning for pylon fractures is that the results are just bad overall, right? And, and you know, and the, this is, this is a quote, pylon fractures can have persistent and devastating consequences on patients' health and well-being. Being. So that's devastating, right? You, you don't put that in a paper unless it's um, true. And if you go look back here, um, you know, some of their, their, their functional scores are actually similar to some other diseases that you would never think about, right? Diabetes, acute MI, um, and so forth. So these are just bad actors when they're, especially when they're high energy. So um, usually they happen in younger males, um, falls, motor vehicle collisions, ra uh, race day, um, antics, motorcycles, risk factors for infection. It's the same as any other fracture we ever deal with that you will, you'll see in the OR, right? I mean, age, obesity, diabetes. I mean, I think you guys get that picture very well. It's nothing new for anything that we deal with. So there's two types here, which called a low energy mechanism, the plafond injury. It's still considered a pylon. I call this a pylon light, like trauma light. Like it's, it's more of a rotational injury with some impaction. So it's technically not an ankle fracture. You know, there's some semantics there, but these patients tend to do much better. They're like a skier's injury, um, you know, uh, biking and so forth. They're not high energy, you know, Hey, I fell off a roof 15 feet, putting on Christmas, putting up Christmas lights. Um, had, a part, had a partner called these a pilonette, a little pilon. pilon okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one too. Yeah. The, the baby pilon. The baby pilon. So like, these are different. So these are not as bad. Like, you know, I had one, one the other day, I mean, it's, they're more simple reductions and so forth, but they can still have effects in terms of, you know, post-traumatic arthritis, but they're not the ones that were like, oh man, I'm losing sleep over thinking about what to do um, all the time. Then you have the high energy and you can just see this is much diff a big, you know, definitely a different injury, right? Look at that tibia. Look at this tibia. Now there's multiple uh, fragmented pieces. There's a lot of comminution. You can just see how the talus here basically drove through the tibia. So uh, this is just a much higher impact, lots more damage here. And, you know, like we said, the, the tissue is the issue here. And these are just pieces when you, after debridement, I mean, this is all just morselized, like it, it's, you can't reconstruct this. 
radio, you know, x-rays, once again, we talked about the AP, the mortis, you know, at the mortis, we're still looking at the same thing here, where we're looking at the, the, the medial and lateral edges of the talus, and then the lateral, or it's going to be the sagittal view. So we're looking where the talus is under uh, the plafond here. Jan, what's a mortis? Like, just for, for those that may not get as much uh, plain film. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's an x-ray that's slightly, um, what, internally rotated, right? So you get, you see down the medial, um, medial gutter here, and then the lateral gutter yeah. around the talus. So it's typically internally rotated. It's a, it's a carpentry term. term. Um, and then the other point that Jan made on that lateral view is that's a, that's a good lateral view there. And it's important that when you're fixing these, because you're really looking at the joint surface that you reproduce that in the OR. So you should be seeing that nice crisp view of the talus because if otherwise if you can get overlapping and you don't get a very good articular view so if you're not seeing that then it's usually something's maybe not quite right yeah and it's interesting someone just wrote i mean uh, nick you asked has anyone ever been called for an ankle fracture it's been a peel on i can tell you it's happened with me uh here because a lot of times it gets listed still as a ankle fracture somehow yep. there's some diagnosis code yep and if I didn't talk to the reps beforehand, which I usually do. Um, you know, for these fractures, they it, they get it gets pulled as an ankle. Yeah, it's important um, to clarify. So that's that. actually happens at a lot of places, and, yeah. and if it hasn't happened to you, that's a a very good thing. Yeah. So um, so here, you know, Nick mentioned it earlier. What's var varus, valgus, and axial load? So varus is the distal part going towards the medial male. Here, the, uh, the distal parts going away, going towards the lateral male, which valgus. And then there's axial load. So axial load, this talus went into the tibia. And it's just kind of, you know, when we're, it, when you're thinking about it, like as a, you know, maybe as a rep standpoint, and when we're thinking about a surgery standpoint, Nick, it, when you see this first x-ray, where do you want to put the, where do you want to put a plate? On the varus side, you're talking. Um, yeah, I want to push the it varus back. Fracture, I yeah, typically varus want to push deformity. it, put something medial. Um, right, you want to push it like it's it's kind of like what would the fifth grader do, right? And the fifth grader would say, "Hey, push push the bone back over there." And and that's it's a way to think about where you may need a plate that might not be your main plate, but it could be your supplemental plate, mm -hmm. um, you know, for the fracture. And the same thing for a valgus. You know, the fifth grader would say, hey, push the fibula back the other way. I mean, we have, we have really smart fifth graders here in Indiana. So, <laughs> uh, but you could tell here, that's how you would do it. And, you know, you would, you would have something laterally based. So, I mean, maybe that's, if you see a pre-op x-ray like that, you may want to say, hey, um, you want to have your anterior lateral pilon plates available potentially. And then when you're, when you see an axial load injury, once again, what would the fifth grader do? Well, if it's getting pushed up, they want to pull it down. So this is when you can use a distractor or an X fix to pull it the other way to get your length back. Or a fusion nail. Or a fusion <laughs> nail, yeah. Um, so the OTA classification, it's just, you know, we go ABC. And this is just if you hear, maybe some of us talk about it in conference or something. A extra articular, so that means the joint's not involved. That's good. Partial articular means it's only part of the joint, so part of it's still intact. So that's why it's partial and it's, it's bad, but at least you got part of the joint that's att attached to the shaft. And then the ugly is what we all dread because it just means all this stuff is very commuted, multiple pieces at the profond or at the joint. These are much more difficult injuries um, and much and with more difficult injuries, higher to harder to treat, more complications. Yeah, and there's anything one, you want to say about this, Nick? Yeah, just the fact that generally speaking, as you go from A, B, C, it gets more severe. But there's one B type that nobody really wants to deal with, and that's that kind of anterior B impaction injury. Yeah, the, the anterior B, and those are bad actors as well. And sometimes can be relatively low energy where you think it's not that big a deal, but they get a lot of impaction of the articular surface. And those generally don't do well and oftentimes end up with a fusion or, or arthroplasty. 
Yeah, and, and so like we're just going over this A, once again, extra articular, B is partial articular. So that means like right here, um, this may be still be connected to the shaft, uh, but this is where you have the anterior impaction with uh, Nick just mentioned. And the reason that's so important is that it's very hard to, uh, you can reduce it, but the stress across the anterior, or the front of the ankle joint is much higher than the back of the ankle joint. And so it tends to wear out and the talus tends to go into that defect. And this is one type of pilon fracture. Usually I will use, you know, for, if I have a defect, I'll use bone graft. Mm -hmm. This is one pilon fracture where I use synthetic bone graft because I don't want anything to absorb here very quickly. So I'll use some type of calcium phosphate um, in order to prevent that piece from, you know, you know, going back, uh, getting impacted again and the tail is coming out the front. Yeah. So for those, you know, those of you listening, that's a great thing to have available, um, or to be thinking about if you get a chance to see the x-ray and you see something that's coming out the front to think about having that available, um, uh, for that case. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I joked around with Andy earlier on the, on the, um, the um, uh, in the chat box about having hydroset because Andy's like the master of hydroset. I think he, he might be at my house right now if I said the word. Um, <laughs> but it's already on your front door, bud. Is, is it, it's like, why Amazon did my Prime. ring go off again? It's and, on Amazon Prime. And, um, <laughs> but I, I do think some of this and some of the bone graft substitutes as well as bone graft in general are very helpful for some of these injuries to have. Um, ready so to fill a defect or a void and um you know I, i'll i tend to use allograft chips uh, for a lot of these things but um you know i think this is one just like a, a, a plateau fracture um the you know some of those substitutes can be very helpful to have on standby just because when you disimpact that bone it leaves a, a large cavity a, a, at times all right and then here, this is C3, what we talked about, just bad injuries. You can just see all these multiple fragments at the joint. These patients do not do well. 